Hi, the topic for today's presentation is Core Java. By the end of it, you should know the various subtopics under Core Java that you should master as a J2W developer. You should start by learning the language basics. Understand the various primitive types that Java comes with, the various conditional statements, looping statements, access specifiers, access modifiers, etc. Since Java is an object-oriented programming language, it is important that you understand the various object-oriented concepts like encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. The more time you spend understanding these two, the easier it will be for you to apply this knowledge to come up with your own classes that build your web application and also to use the existing APIs in Java. API stands for Application Programmer Interfaces and as I said, once you master these two, it's just applying this knowledge to come up with your own classes or to use the existing classes to build a Java based or a J2W based application. To make it easy, uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you are building a website which allows employers to post their job openings and a candidate to post their resumes and to create a profile and to apply for this job opening, something like a monster.com or dice.com. Dice the classes that you can think of for this application would be employer class, uh, job, job class, and then a candidate or a user class. You can come up with, the, for, uh, with these classes by what you learned here, by using what you have learned here, and then you use the existing Java APIs to build your own application. You will be using the JDBC API, which stands for Java Database Connectivity, to store all the employer information, the job information, or the candidate information within your database. So you'll be able to execute SQL statements from within Java using the JDBC API. Once you have the job postings, you will be retrieving them from the database and then you will be displaying them on the web page. For that, to hold the data that comes back, to hold the multiple jobs that comes back, you can use the classes from the Collections API. Collections API has classes like List, Set, and Map. I'll be discussing them in detail uh, in my future presentations. And then, once you have the job postings displayed and a candidate wants to upload his resume or uh, wants to apply for one of these job postings, you'll be using the IO API, which stands for Input Output Streams. It allows you to read and write data to a stream, which could be a file system or which could be a network. In our job portal, it will be a file system where uh, you'll be storing all the different candidates' files, uh, resumes. So all these APIs are nothing but collection of interfaces and the actual implementation for this is provided either by Oracle or they, it could be provided by a third-party vendor or another company. Uh, for example, a JDBC driver or the actual implementation for JDBC can, could be coming from Microsoft. Uh, let's say you are using a SQL Server database and when you are doing uh, JDBC calls, you will be using the SQL Server driver or the implementation classes that Microsoft provides. JAXP stands for Java API for XML parsing. These interfaces allow you to do everything that's possible in XML. DOM parsing, SAX parsing, validating your XML file, applying a style sheet to your XML file to convert, into, convert it into a HTML or XML or another XML, etc. You can do all that using the Java API for XML parsing. And as I said, the actual implementation, the parser itself, the classes that that can come from Sun, the default implementation can come, sorry, Oracle, uh, or it could come from a third party vendor. Exceptions are errors that happen at runtime. They could be checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. You need to know when to use which, and uh, that's dealt in the exception handling API. As you learn each of these um, APIs under Core Java, as you master Core Java, no matter which book you follow uh, or a course material if you are in college that you follow, I suggest you do get certified from Oracle. Go for Oracle Certified Java Programmer. 
Certification not only fills any technical gaps you might have, it also helps you uh, get to the core or master, master the core or the basics. What might be a tough interview question will become fairly easy once you do your certifications. For example, as I said, the Connections API has various interfaces like maps, sets and lists and within list you have array list and linked list. If, if you do your certification, you will know what exactly uh, which uh, class here, uh, array list or a linked list should you use in your, while building your application well. So depending on the scenario, you will be using the various classes and interfaces in this API and certification will cover any gaps you might have and that, that's just one example or one advantage of doing a certification. To summarize, now you know the various topics that you should master under Core Java. You should start off with the language basics, move on to the object oriented concepts. Then you should learn and understand the various APIs that are provided by Java. I will be presenting each of these topics in detail uh, in the next few presentations. I will not be doing the language basics because I don't know them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I will not be doing the language basics because um, sticking to the purpose of my presentations, I will be filling in the gap between college and IT industry. But if you have any questions here, you can always email me at baratsblog at gmail.com. In my next presentation would be on, uh, I'll be giving a hands-on example of using Eclipse. You will be seeing how a real-time Java project looks like within the Eclipse IDE. If you haven't downloaded JDK and Eclipse yet, this is the time to do it. Keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.